How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me a guarantee. I'm gonna taste this jambalaya first. Let's just go ahead on and cook. Get the part of the chicken that I like. Turtle stew, come here, boy. Mm. You know how it looks good? This is going to be good, I guarantee. I talk to it like it knows what I'm talking about. I like it, it's good. I believe in easy cooking, believe me, I do. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. Today, we're gonna boil a few shrimps, and then we're gonna make a, a crab meat etouffee. And it's so good, mm-hmm. Just to think about it makes me hungry. So first of all, we got some shrimp we're going to cook right in here. In here, I've already put three quarts of water, six lemons quartered, and I put uh, five cans of beer, and I'm fixing to put the sixth one, because it calls for a six pack of beer, and that makes it a six pack. Oh man, I've got to turn that fire up a little bit because I want that thing boiling when I put those swimps in there, I guarantee. Let me see what this stove says right here. Hey, we got to get on there and look better than that, I'll guarantee. Uh, now I done looked good, that's on, yeah, there we go. We put it on medium low and it's boiling, that's good, I like that. And I'll stir. Whenever you add anything, believe me, us Cajuns will tell you, they stir. Anytime you add anything, they stir, believe me. And that's the way it, it, it makes it taste more better. Now into this, I'm gonna put, this is onion powder. I'm gonna put a cup of onion powder in there to get it to boiling with it. Get going there, girls. And this is a half a cup of garlic powder. Let me stir that onion powder in there. Quit acting like that. Don't be a politician with me. <laughs> Put that good garlic powder in there. I'll tell you, when they invented that, they really did away with, with a single bed. They got, everybody got twin beds now when they got the garlic powder. <laughs> That's for true. <laughs> All right, let's melt up down in there. There you go. Now I got to put some Worcestershire sauce in there. Always shake the bottle because it, it goes down to the bottom and that's where all the flavor is. You don't, you don't want to miss out on the flavor. And I think this says three-fourths cup. Three-fourths cup? That's what it says. So I'm gonna put three-fourths cup in there, I hope. That's what I'm gonna do. I don't have a measure like this, you know that. Come on now. Can ah. I take a sip of this? It's good for you. <laughs> May make you cough a little bit that first sip. <laughs> now that's three fourths cup and a little more. <laughs> Put the lid back on this because I may need it for something else. No telling. <laughs> now I got to put, I got the hunt, I got the lemons in there, and I got the six pack of beer. The onion powder and the garlic powder, Worcestershire sauce, and uh, it says five tablespoons, five teaspoons, no. Oh, I got to put some dried mint. Let's put that in there. Now, I use mint instead of bay leaf, and the reason I do, mint doesn't just kill the flavor. You don't taste just mint, it just, it kind of does something to help the flavor. And that's a teaspoon full of mint, dried mint. You can get that in any good store. If they don't have it, tell them to get, get some so it'll be a good store. <laughs> to stir that in there. That's smelling good enough to eat just like it is. Sure is. 
Do that smell good? It says five tablespoons of salt. Now I'll just put the, I'll put the, I'll use a teaspoon. Now that's one teaspoon, ladies and gentlemen. Bet your last dollar that is. There's one teaspoon. I'm going to put ten teaspoons. Two, three, four, five, six, Eight. Now you don't think that's a teaspoon. I'm gonna show you that this this is nine. I got somebody helping me count out there. <laughs> that's a tablespoon. I don't want I want a teaspoon. To show y'all that I do know how to measure a teaspoon full of salt. That's a teaspoonful. You don't believe me, do you? See that? Nothing to it like eating lettuce. And I'll put one more teaspoon full of salt in there and then stir it. <laughs> and there the shrimp's all. Just stir this in there. Now you go in there. That's beginning to look like some gravy. Some of that Yankee gravy, you know, not good black gravy like we have down in South Louisiana. Now I'm going to time these shrimp when they start boiling. The shrimp cook fast, believe me, they do. And uh, when they get real pink, they're usually done. And when they float, after they're, they're really done. So I'm gonna put these, this is five pounds of shrimp. They've been frozen, and we don't un unthaw them. We thawed them out, and my hands are clean, believe me. All right, shrimps. Let's get the boiling. I'm gonna put that fire a little hotter. That's the wrong one. Here it is. Yep. And they'll boil, and they'll taste so good. I've got a good sauce made for these. Whew. I guarantee that's for true. Come on, shrimp, get going. You just need enough liquid to to uh, cover them, you know, that's all you need. I don't want to splash me, I don't like to burn, though. <laughs> ah, shrimp, get in there. Get yourself cooking good so I can taste you soon. They cold. They are real cold. <laughs> They've been froze, that's how come the reason. <laughs> I've got a story I want to tell you all as soon as I get all these shrimp in here. I've been waiting to tell this story to you good people who have come here to watch me do this foolish man. Let me get my dish towel that I carry with me all the time in the kitchen. You've got to have it. Now, what I'm going to do is stir one time. That's good enough. And I'm going to check this deal to see how it looks. Yeah. That's about as high as I want it to go, and it's gonna boil and just it's fixing to boil right this minute. But I'll tell this story first. Years ago, in South Louisiana, there were two families living next door to each other, and each one of them had a boy children, one boy. And the old little boy loved each other. It was, it was an amazing thing how much they loved to be with each other all the time. And they would play and play and play and never have a fuss or an argument about anything. And by golly, on Sunday, they had to separate to go to church. One of them was a Catholic and the other one was a Methodist. So they separated two little boys and they actually would get sick on Sunday because they didn't get to be with each other. And one day, one of the fathers, kind of wise man, said, I'll tell you what, let's do now, ladies. One Sunday, let's both of them go to the Catholic church, and the other Sunday, both of them go to the Methodist church. The wife said, I wonder why we didn't think about that. He didn't answer that question. So the first Sunday, they went to the Catholic church, and the little Catholic boy was so nice, explaining to the little Methodist boy just what was taking place in there, you know. He explained everything that, that the priest did, and the altar boy, and all that stuff. And the next Sunday, they went to the Methodist church. Whew. 
they went down, and the choir got up to sing, and the little Catholic boy had never seen that before. And he asked her and met this boy and said, what that is? And he explained to him what that was. And he explained everything that was happening. Then the last thing, the preacher came out there. And he looked out there and said, uh, I'm just going to talk to you just a small bit. The little Methodist boy said, that's a damn lie. <laughs> <laughs> he explained to him just exactly what it was. <laughs> now these shrimp just get going all right there right now. And they're boiling. I'm going to set my clock. Maybe I'm going to do this just for fun. Got to go down here, come back. Now go over here where I can see you. Now in this part, I'm going to put this on here and cover it. And turn the fire down some. Yep, because I don't want it to boil over on me, though. No. I want to make a, a crab meat etouffee. Now, etouffee means smothered. You don't put any water in this, just you put a little wine, and all alcohol cooks right out. That's terrible, but that's true. And uh, in this pot right here, I'm going to put a whole let me see. I'm, I, I keep my recipe here. When you've got as many recipes as I have, you ain't no way to remember them all. I don't try. But right here it says a half a cup or one stick of margarine or butter. Now, I use margarine because it doesn't cost me as much money. Look at that. Tastes good. Got to wipe that. Mm-hmm. I want to put in this, as soon as I get this going, it'll be a good idea to turn the fire on. That helps. <laughs> I guarantee you, I've got the fire going on high. That's too high. I'll just cut that down to a medium. Got that down on medium right now. And into this, I'm going to put four cups of chopped onion. Whew, boy. Sounds like a lot. But when you make an etouffee, it's smothered. You've got to use a lot of onion. If you don't use a lot of onion, it ain't going to taste good. That's how simple that is. Nothing to that. Just put that in here right now. Yeah. Go in there, boy. You're melting pretty. I guarantee you all now. And this, you let it simmer for a long time. First here. I don't put the cream meat in there until last, but I got... But let me see if I got it now. There it is, right over there. Into this. As soon as I can get that little corn mark. Now, there you go. You're melting right now. Get it melting. I don't like to put onion and margarine that's not, it's not melted, no. So, here we go, anyhow. That is just plain old ordinary onion. That everybody sees. These happen to be the good onion. I like to make a sandwich out of good onion. I guarantee that's good. I made one last night. Now, into this, I'm going to put some bell pepper. Let's see how much bell pepper. I'm going to put one cup of chopped bell pepper. That's what that is right there. Chopped bell pepper. Okay. Stir. Remember what I told you about it. Have you put anything in anything, you got to stir. Hey. Oh, the onions are beginning to look clear already. And now I got to put some green onion I got right here. A cup of chopped green onion. Hmm. Man, and they're good. They're good. They're good for you too. Went for green onion, I believe I'd have been gone years ago. But I eat them, I love them. Get that stirred in there, good. Oh, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, now I got to put some garlic. Shop. That must be garlic. Yeah. <laughs> 
garlic. It's not too much. You don't want to put too much. That's one teaspoonful of garlic. There ain't nothing to that. Hardly no garlic at all. It just got around in there. But it's getting a little juice in there. Without, you never put garlic in until you get a little juice. If you put it in with it, it, uh, just nothing but oil, it, it clams up and don't put out no flavor. See? That's what it does. All right, here we go. Mmm, mmm. Mm. Excuse me, I got to look at these shrimps. Doing all right, but they got to boil better than that. Come on, shrimps. That'll do it. Now. When you're doing fine, into this I got to put a little steak sauce, like a tablespoon full of Good steak sauce. Well, let me put this parsley in there first. I better put that in there. This is chopped parsley. And it's good. I love parsley. Good for you. Clean your breath up and all that stuff too, you know. That's so I read it. Chlorophyll, that's what it is. Good stuff. Mm. All right. Put that there. I got to put a little cup of wine in there, no. <laughs> Two tablespoons full of, oh, this is picante sauce. Oh, it smells good. Picante sauce. And that is another good seasoning, it really is. I like it myself, and I use it in a lot of things. Throw that in there, boys. I ain't going. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That, doesn't that look pretty? I guarantee that pretty. And it smells good. Uh, it tastes much more better than that, I'll tell you the truth. That's the truth. Now, into this, I've got to put two cups of dry white wine. I use a Chablis that you can either cook with or drink. It don't make any difference. <laughs> but if you drink too much of it, you can't cook. Can't cook. <laughs> and you stir that good. I got to put some salt in here too. Salt to taste. What you figure is how much you got in there. Then you can put enough in there to know what it's going to taste like. At least I can. But that's practice. I've been practicing that a long, long time. Oh man, you, mm, mm, that, that just smells so good. Now, I want to be sure I got everything in there and have, I got a half a cup of stick of margarine, a half a full cup of chopped onion, I got that. One cup of chopped green onion, I got that. One cup of chopped bell pepper, I got that. One and a half cup of chopped fresh parsley, I got that. Two cups of dry white wine, I put that on there, just there. Two tablespoons full of steak sauce, I got that. One teaspoon full of minced, garlic. Got all that in there and I got to stir this and let it come into a boil and it's coming to a boil right now. Oh boy. Mm. Now let me see what I got over here. I got something that looks like crab meat. This was claw meat. I like it because it seems to have more flavor than the other and it's easy to get out of the claw than it is the rest of the body, you know. I didn't put any salt in there yet. I better put that in here before I put that. Come here, salt. How much salt y'all think this ought to take? We got a bunch of stuff there. So I'm gonna put, that's one teaspoon. And I'm gonna put another teaspoon, kind of run it over a little bit, you know. Now, <laughs> that ought to be enough salt on that. We got to stir it in there. Throw that in there. Amen. Ooh-wee. I got to put a little hot pepper. I know I got to put a little hot pepper in there. Let me see what it says. Pecan, nope, I got pecan sauce. That's hot enough. That's what, you don't have to worry about any more hot sauce. I got some in there already. When you put that pecan sauce, it's hot enough. All right? Let's go in there, crab meat. 
Now, before this crab meat went in there, I want you to know it was hand-picked. You picked all the little shells out of it and things like that. <laughs> and it don't taste good. It just, and that ain't all you may think you're gonna broke a tooth. It may be just a shell that broke, but you got, you, you're not gonna worry about it being a tooth you got broke. And that ain't good, no. So we've got this good, clean crab meat in there. And what we're gonna do, get this to go in where I got it on simmer. Looking over that little clock to see what it's got. But I think them shrimps is most dead, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I got to look at them and see. Take, take one out and taste it, maybe. See how that mixes up real nice? I'm gonna put this on a simmer, and it's got to simmer for quite a while. Uh, and then you serve this over rice. And it's good too, yeah. I guarantee it's good. I don't know who's talking back there, but that it ain't helping him or me either one. Mm, mm, mm. Now, what I'm going to do is put this on simmer. Put the lid on it. We don't even lift the lid for quite a while. It all depends. I think that, uh, there we go. Now, let, me, let me simmer that down to simmer. I done did it right this moment. Now that's simmering. Let me check these shrimps. Ha! They are done. They are done. And what I'm gonna do is turn the fire off because I know they're done. I gotta take one out. Say, come on, here. come here, come here, come here, come here. I'm gonna turn the fire off because those shrimps are done all the way plum. No use in one with another thing with them. I can tell you, just let them soak. Hi, hi, hi. Got it out, isn't that nice? Now, you know something? I'm gonna go over here and eat some of this. I wonder what's in here. Oh, I see, a two fade. I wonder where the rice is. I don't need any rice, but I'm gonna get me a little a two fade. Put in this nice bowl I got right here. We cooked this a little early to be sure I had some etouffee for me to eat. Come here, boy. Get enough so you'll be sure you know what you eat, all right? Got that. Put this right here. Then I'm gonna go over there and eat it after I have a sip of water. Isn't that terrible water? Okay. Mm. Ah, water. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is sit down here, and I've just bought a little shrimp early so I'd be sure I had some that I could eat too. Mmm, good too. <laughs> now let me see about this eight two fake. First put this nice red napkin on me. I won't spill anything on my dangarees. Yeah, let's go. And just pour a little wine. Now, you're supposed to eat to drink white wine with fish, but I like red wine better, so I use a little red wine, Marlowe, just a sip. That's all I'm going to have. That even a good sip. That's what I'm going to try. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now that is good stuff. I'm telling you the truth. That's, that etouffee is so good and it's easy to fix. But this is easy cooking. Right there. Mm-hmm. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. Let's have a shrimp to go with that. That's good. 
Sometimes I put sauce on them. They didn't need it. Held a little sip of that wine and wash that down. That ought to be good. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy, I tell you. <laughs> For more information and a complete line of fine Justin Wilson products, visit www.justinwilson.com or you may call 228-207-5379. Mesha, that's the Justin Wilson Fine Products, justinwilson.com. That is good.